السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ام دكتور رحمه الغابشي ام كونسلتنت ريبرودكتيف اندوكراين اند انفرتيليتي ان دي ان اور رويال هوسبيتال ام اي وونت تو ثانك دكتور مسلم تو جيف مي ذس اوبورتونيتي تو سي يو اول اند جيف يو ذس سمول ليكتشر اباوت دي وات وي مين باي بي جي دي Simply, BGD is an early genetic diagnosis of an embryo before it has been implanted into the uterus. In other words, you will see a lots of definitions, but it all will come to one point, that pre-implantation genetic diagnosis is an early form of perinatal diagnosis. Genetic laboratory procedures that are performed on embryo prior to implantation or oocytes prior to fertilization. We look for a specific disease but use BGD techniques to identify embryos at risk. So what we mean by prenatal versus pre-implantation diagnosis? You will find a lot between me and Dr. Moza how to define these two things. What we mean by BGD and prenatal uh, diagnosis? Well, the BGD, we, we do all the tests <coughs> prior to implantation. We do them all in the lab before we transfer the healthy embryo to the mums. While, so it, when we transfer the baby at the level of about two to three weeks after the her period, we're already sure that the mom has going to get a healthy baby and there will be no risk of abortion, inshallah. While in the perinatal, if the fetus, if we do the test, which is usually done between the 11 to 13 weeks, the earliest, so there will be a risk of abortion if the fetus become positive for any genetic disorder. Usually the perinatal diagnosis done by invasive procedures like amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling, while the BGD all done in the lab. Brian and mother will be not affected by any of these invasive procedures, either psychological and uh, medical, I will, I will say. So the pre-implantation diagnosis introduced initially in 1990s with the biopsy of a single cell for uh, pre-embryo followed by its genetic diagnosis through different techniques than in the lab with like fish, PCR, SCGHRA, and the subsequent replacement to the, to the patient of those embryos classified by genetic diagnosis as normal. What, what are those indications in which we need the BGD for? Procedure is usually offered to couples with a known single gene disorders. Couples with chromosomal abnormalities that can be detected by a BGD. Requesting single selection for X-linked disorders like hemophilias and all those. BGD also will be done not only for those patients who are having a genetic disorders, but we offer it nowadays for those patients who are at risk of aneuploidy, especially moms who are going for IVF and they are, their age is ab above 35 or 40 years of age. Or they had a prior trisomic conceptions. Patient with recurrent pregnancy losses. Nowadays, the recurrent pregnancy loss is treated in, in a, a BGD, they are over a BGD, in a form of microarray that they are sequencing the whole chromosomes and they find out if that baby or that embryo is having any abnormalities so it will not be transferred to the mom. So hopefully by that, she will get a healthy pregnancy, continue healthy pregnancy instead of miscarrying, especially when we don't have an obvious cause why she is continuing to miscarry. Patient who had brave, br previous IVF cycles failure. We do get couples who are having three and four and even nine IVF miscarriage, uh, IVF failures, and we don't know why they are continue to have uh, uh, IVF failure, although we are sure that they're being transferred to the uterus and healthy looking embryos. So that's why they are being offered BGD and BGS and all that. Requesting BGD for HLA typing, especially when 
a, a, a family has, for example, a leukemia baby having any genetic disorder and they need the new uh, 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 technique to help that baby. So they, we do the BGD to make sure that the, the healthy we are, we're having a healthy matched embryo to whatever baby we have at present. Requesting sex selection for family balancing. We, we agree with that or not agree, but it is done. Single gene disorders, maybe talk. So BGD process usually, what we do, this is all in IVF centers. We give the ovulation induction in form of uh, gonadotrophins. We make sure that the ovaries have been stimulated and we get a good follicles. And then we retrieve the follicles. We do fertilization, we biopsy the embryos, we get, we get the genetic analysis, and then we, we transfer the healthy embryo. So this is what happened. We do uh, ovulation induction by the gonadotrophins, we stimulate the embryos in this way, then we, we uh, do the retrieval, healthy baby to have been transferred. This is a very, it's not that complicated as it's seen now, but it is just an ultrasound guided procedure where we introduce it to the mom's uh, uh, vagina and we go under the ultrasound guide and retrieve all the oocytes after being uh, uh, stimulated the ovaries. And then we got it in a tube, we take it to the lab and we uh, analyze it there. The fertilization usually done in two forms, either conventional insemination, fertilization which we know, or intracytoplasmic intra sperm injection ICSI. So usually the, the embryos whom we are planning to have the BGD on, usually done by ICSI. To assure that the fertilization happened and we have as much as uh, uh, many embryos available to do the test on. So we have, uh, um, um, then we will get more and more healthy uh, embryos, uh, available numbers. Here we are talking about quantity rather than quality. Later we will talk about quality. Usually the test is done either on day three, cleavage stage embryos we call it, or it is done on day five on a blastocyst. Each one of them has its pros and cons, but usually nowadays it is done mainly on the cleavage stage biopsy on day three uh, when the embryos is between six to eight cell stage and they will take one, one cell and that cell being tested and make sure that, that uh, to see if that uh, embryo is having the, the genetic disorder or not. Usually it is done by the DNA amplification or mutation characterization, which is these the two techniques usually we analyze it. And then after that, the embryo is transferred to the mom, usually on day five or even six sometimes. And so we are sure by this technique that we are transferring a healthy embryo. After that, the embryo gets implanted and the pregnancy will go on. This procedure is take usually around three weeks from the time of period. So can mistake happen? Yes, can mistake happen in a diagnosis? That's what we mean in a diagnosis, okay? So usually the mistakes so happened in a different process, uh, in different ways. So that's why patient going for BGD need a lot of counseling. How you counsel these patients? They need contraception before they go for a BGD. Why is that? <clears throat> now you are stimulating the mom. She is ready to conceive even naturally, صح? So, if you didn't ask her to use a contraception, she may conceive normally, apart from the embryo which you are going to transfer. And that happened with us, okay, when I was doing the IVF. It happened with us and finally, we found out that we, are, we were sure that we transferred the healthy embryo and still we got a healthy baby because nobody asked that mom to use a contraception during that stimulation period. Controlled ovarian stimulation, sometimes they don't know that IVF process, it's a stressful period. It's not an easy. The couple will be coming and going out of hospital for around two to three weeks. That is not an easy time to go through. 
IVF process, it's very expensive. It's not an easy one. They, you, they, the mother will receive a lot of medications during the time. Sometimes they do have a lot, something like two to three injections per day to get stimulated the ovaries and then they will go through the ovum pickup, fertilization, waiting, stressful period of waiting for the embryos to, make, to, to see if she will get a healthy embryo or not. Then the success rate, it's not a 100% pregnancy rate. This is only in the best centers, up to 50 to 60, I would say. In best centers, 50 to 60%, they will conceive, but not 100%. So conception is a different issue. Okay, we are not talking here that she will conceive 100%. She may still fail to conceive. So they have to know that. Misdiagnosis can happen in around 2 to 3% of cases. Although we are doing a lots of procedure to make sure that we are transferring a healthy embryo to the mother, but still misdiagnosis can happen. I will tell you later how is that happened. Diagnosis of only targeted disease. They have to know that we are only making BGD for a certain disease, not all diseases, okay? So the, we are, for example, a, a couple coming for sickle cell disease, we are only look, targeting sickle cell disease, but not other diseases. So later, they have to know that, that you are only targeting a special or a targeted disease, not everything. So in future, if that baby get a, another disease, which is genetically disorder also, then they should not blame you. Okay, because you are doing it only for a specific disease. But the, we have also advantages of BGD. We will have a less malformed babies, less pregnancy termination. It's not an easy, stressful. If you, them, you tell the couple that finally you are pregnant, but unfortunately your baby is carrying that sort of disease, which you wanted to miss, you, you wanted to get rid of it. So. You, you expose them to miscarriage with all its complication. It's stressful medically and psychologically. More pregnancies after ART. Lowered medical cost. This is medical cost if you are going to take care of a sickle cell baby for all his life. How is that going to costly? Will be a lot of cost on the hospital budget. While if we do a BGD, that can cost us up to maybe 5,000, 6,000 reals, that's all. And then we will get a healthy baby. So what do you mean about ART? ART, uh, this is assisted reproductive technology, al IVF. But at the same time, they need to know that there are some sort of risk on BGD. What is that risk? It's all literature and all research talk that when we take a biopsy of a single cell, of an embryo of six to eight cells, we may expose that embryo in future for a risk of sorts of problems which we don't know up to date. As I said before, that BGD started only in 90s. So we are still around 20 years. Still we don't have enough researchers says that the BGD babies are totally healthy babies. Yes, up to date, we have optimistic researches and updates and literatures and what they said, it's all healthy and alhamdulillah, no problems we are facing up to date from BGD, but still we don't know after 50 years, for example, what we are going to face in sort of cancers, diseases, okay? We are not, go we are still in a, in a form of doing a lot of researches on that. So we don't know. There is a query risk, but we don't know how is that risk. Is it a real risk or it is only a number risk? Okay, yeah, and only in literatures. Removal of cells from an embryo, as I said, and also a risk of misdiagnosis. Uh, the risk of misdiagnosis, as I said, you need to know that it is around two to three percent. That's what you need to know. How is that misdiagnosis can happen? Sometimes is human error, as I said, unprotected test, sex, and he was not advised to do to take a contraception. Mislabeling, misidentification, misinterpretation, wrong embryo transfer, incorrect probes or, or primers. This is all, you know, uh, theories. But in, in what I see that in reality, 
this is very, very, very rare. Up to date, I never heard about it, like, you know, wrong ember transfer, inc incorrect probes or primers. This is usually in the IVF center, they will make sure about each and every step about 100 times before they transfer that embryo to the mom. Technical probes or primers failure, contamination for the terminal, paternal operators, and so on, or there is an mosaism, a lay drop out, and parental disomy, all these things. The parents, we sometimes we need to know what's going on in the community, what they will think about PGD. Maybe in our community, because it's not wide, okay? it's not widely known, and the community still doesn't know about, much about it. it we don't have uh, uh, um, in the uh, governmental um, IVF centers. We still we are not uh, offering IVF in public, you know. So we don't we don't have these issues of ethical problems. But in other communities, when it is widely done, not only for medical disorders, these sorts of ethical issues being talked about. Like, uh, you know, do we have the right to choose? Do we have the, is these embryos who are not suitable? Is it they have the right? The, are we having all the right to just destroy them and throw them? On, you know, all these discrimination against those patients who have the disabilities because we didn't do BGD, for example. And then, is it safe? As I said before, we need more and more resources. Resource BGD is expensive. I said, uh, yani, uh, we are sending IVF uh, patient to do BGDs. Sometimes it costs around 5,000 to 7,000 reals. And still, with 5,000 to 7,000 reals, we are not sure still that mom will get pregnant or not, okay? So psychologically harm to the parents and child, very stressful process, especially when I remember we have a family whom we sent her twice for BGD and still no embryo transferred. Why? Because they couldn't find any uh, healthy embryo to be transferred. Imagine how much stress they can go through. No embryo transferred. Sometimes even we, the, the, the patient says, because I had just a very stress, I said, even the unhealthy embryo, please transfer it. And she has to sign on that, that she agreed to, be, to have an unhealthy embryo because of the stress she went through. It's not an easy three weeks in her life. So what is the future in BGD? BGD is a relatively new procedure and much ongoing research is being performed to expand and improve it. We given the technical consideration associated with BGD and BGS. These procedures should be limited to centers experienced with micro manipulation, not any centers. Genetic links to common diseases. This is our future. Diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, endometriosis, cancers, and so on may be identified, and BGD will become available to control the transmission of these diseases in future. BGD and BGS indications, utility and outcomes remain an active area, as I said before, for researchers in reproductive medicine. It's a place in medicine and society will continue to generate controversy and ethical debates. Now let us come to our country, Oman. What we have? In Royal Hospital, about two to three years back, we had a committee formed by uh, um, the DG that around that we have to form um, this committee to help those patients who are having a BGD sort of, uh, who need a BGD and to send them for that. We formed that, we, we did the protocol, we send it to the ministry, we get the approval, we start sending patients. Unfortunately, in two, in, uh, just in August 2015, everything is stopped. So now we are facing with families who are desperately and they have a problem, an issue that they need to go for IVF, BGD, but still we cannot send them on the government resource because of the, they, we don't, we can't, we can't send them, it's stopped. And we hope that this will restart again. We hope to develop our own IVF, BGD centers. Hopefully, inshallah, that will happen in future. But unfortunately, now the ministry is not sending. But we can advise these patients to go to a centers where we visit before. So we went as a committee, we went and visit these centers 
in UAE, in Jordan, and make sure that these centers are really, really uh, good centers and they can deal with our patients and they are doing very well when they go there. But they have to go now on their own budget and each BGD, BGD cycle with a, with a success rate of about, I would say, 50 percent can, it, it can cost them up to 5,000 to 7,000 reals. And that happened also for SQU. They are not different than us. And in the Ministry of Health, as I said, in private hospital, unfortunately, the private hospitals which we, which we have in Oman, they are only doing the simple IVF, only for the infertility purpose, not for BGD. So we don't have no center in Oman till today. We don't have any center in Oman doing BGD or BG, BGS, no trusted centers. So we don't have any centers in Oman. We have to send our patient either to our neighbor countries, in UAE or in Jordan. Uh, we have uh, Holybone, we have Faqih, we have uh, Noor. Um, Noor in Jordan? No, Noor in Dhabi. This is which the ministry visit them, but they have others. Like in this, which the, we, we as a committee, we visit them and we make sure that their labs are fine and we, we are happy to deal, to send our patient to. And same to Jordan also. We visit Al Istishari, Mustashfa Farah, Al Amel, these good centers to, to send our patient. We are getting good results from them but unfortunately stop. And if the patient is going, they are going to on, on their own budget. Is the cost different between these two? Different? Not much, not much. And when, when it comes to the BGD, it's not much. Two minutes. That's it, I'm done. So the people are eligible to, to be sent, obviously? The criteria which I gave you before, mm -hmm. and well, Apart from those criteria, we had, I'm dealing now with couples who want it for sex selection for, for family balance. We are getting also that. Mm -hmm. But in Oman, يعني, uh, the Ministry of Health, which was sending before, we were sending only mainly for medical reasons. We never send it for, and the, only, the, the other thing was that they don't have, they never had any healthy baby before. No healthy child. So if a family have five sicklers, and they have one sickler, normal, they will not be sent because it's costly. You have to, you know, when you have a budget, you have to think in that way. You have a limited budget. Either you give it to a family who has at least one healthy child, normal, or you give it to a family, no children. 